I'm Lindsay. I did it, I did it. Oh my god. And as someone who spent seven years living in a 175 square foot micro studio, I'm no stranger to small spaces. But van life takes it to a whole new level. After one hell of a false start, I finally bought this van, a 2013 Chevy Express. And now it's finally time to get to work. So follow me as I build out my van with the hopes of eventually achieving my goal of visiting every national park here in the United States. Well, it's official. I own a van that is in good working condition, most importantly. And I'm currently just sitting here on my balcony and staring at it while it is parked across the street from my house um, in a combination of admiration and awe and fear. So I guess now I just kind of start doing stuff to it. Um, scary. Most importantly, this thing is a vehicle. So the first thing I actually did was add this Bluetooth adapter for the radio, plus a phone charger and a dashboard mount to hold my phone while I drive. I also attached a toll booth transponder to the windshield and threw on a seat cover to hide the gaping hole in the driver's seat. I also bought a dash cam. It was sort of an impulse buy, but I was already considering getting one and it was only like $40. So I figured I would try it out. But before I got the chance to go into full-blown construction mode, I had an unfortunate drone accident that involved my right hand and a lot of blood. So... <laughs> Look away for squeamish, but this is two days later. That's pretty bad. Um, it's not even the worst. Um, the thumb is the worst. I finally removed the thumb bandage after a lot of effort. Cleaned it up a little, and uh, this is the, the final damage. Uh, so it really just went right through my nail. Um, not sure if I'm going to get to keep this nail or not, but we'll see. Hopefully I gain some semi-functional use of my opposable thumb. Uh, that would be nice. So unfortunately, that means uh, without the use of my dominant hand, I can't really get started on the build itself yet. Um, so I'm going to spend today instead reading the manual, like cover to cover, and um, waiting for my hand to become a little bit more useful. Mostly it was pretty self-explanatory, basic stuff, but the maintenance section at the end was really helpful in terms of knowing what to be aware of later on and being able to cross-reference diagrams in the manual to the exact spot on the actual van itself was something that I'm glad I took the time to do. But after spending all that time with the van, I realized something. So I think the horn on this might be broken. For somebody who was afraid to change out a headlight a couple weeks ago, I feel like I sure am getting bold. But um, I feel like I refuse to pay somebody to, to fix this problem. I, can, I know I can do it myself. Um, there are a couple of you know, potential reasons uh, as to why it's not working. Um, one of the simplest of which is that the contact points are dirty somewhere along the connection, whether that be in the steering wheel itself uh, or the cable leading to the horn. So that's kind of the simplest thing to check out. I'm gonna to try to get into all of those uh, places with some electronics cleaner and uh, hopefully that should solve the problem. Unfortunately, that 
did not work. Um, it doesn't seem like it's an issue with the contact points, uh, but I won't be able to say for sure until my dad gets here with the multimeter so that we can measure the voltage that uh, each individual component and part is actually getting from the battery. So he should be here any second and hopefully we'll be able to actually diagnose the problem and figure out how to really fix this horn. Dad had to get out of here, but we did manage to figure it out. Um, the horn itself is broken. So whenever I was pressing on the steering wheel, um, my dad was seeing a spike in the voltage uh, coming from that same plug that I had cleaned yesterday. So I'm getting power all the way down, which means that the last final point of failure is the horn itself. Just grabbed a new horn so hopefully when it's not absolutely downpouring I will replace this tomorrow and this girl will be honking again. Okay uh, fingers crossed. Put it in for real. Fuck yeah. So during this whole process of replacing the horn, I kind of very organically came to a conclusion about what I'm going to call the van. Um, and to be honest, I'm sort of like still of two minds about like naming a van. Um, part of me thinks it's like goofy and cheesy. And then another part of me is kind of just like, you know, like whatever, it's it's cute, why not? But basically because she was missing her honk, uh, I offhandedly referred to the van as a goose. Um, and the minute I said it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, it's, it's white like a goose. I like to think of it as the chaotic goose with a knife in its mouth from Untitled Goose Game. Um, but, but she is goose. And now she honks nice and loud like the good little goose that she is. So, you know, I'll probably still just refer to it as the van mostly, but if anybody asks, uh, I do have an answer and it has a cute little story behind it. So she's a goose, it's goose. Um, I just hope I can have her built out enough in time to fly south for the winter. Just pulled in my favorite place, the uh, auto parts store. Uh, this time I'm mixing it up though, going to Advanced Auto Parts because it was conveniently on the way to the store. Um, I realized that this is not a good look for my windshield wiper blade. So I'm gonna grab one of those and probably a bunch of other things that I will remember I need as soon as I walk in. I'm back. I made it out of Advanced Auto Parts alive and um, got these two very nice new wiper blades. They look a hell of a lot nicer quality than the old ones. Um, also, it turns out I didn't need to bring the like old wiper blade with me. Uh, they just look it up on the computer and I just look like an idiot. So let's get these on. As the kids say, sheesh. Well, my hand is mostly healed. I have a hat that accurately reflects my skill level 
and I think I'm ready to start tearing apart this van. So I was just like grabbing bigger items off the floor mat and found this key. And I was about to throw it away and then I was like, hmm, you know what? It looks real similar to the key to the car. So uh, I gave it a shot and it unlocks my door. So I have a spare key. I am so glad I didn't just throw it out. torn out all those broken fixtures, I get to move on to sort of the main project of the day, which is actually tearing out this floor mat. Um, the one thing about it is that I should actually save the floor mat to use as a template later on. It's not going to be perfect, but this is such an irregular shape that, you know, it's better to have than nothing. Um, so I'm actually going to start by cutting out all the little excess strips here. Uh, and then I guess I'll just pull it out all in one piece and keep that around until it's time to cut plywood and laminate. stops the ABBA so you can hear me, but um, here goes I guess. I'm honestly afraid of what's going to be under here. Okay, so like this is what it looks like, half ripped out. Uh, no rust or holes in the floor or anything that I can tell so far. So that's a good sign. Um, yeah, this is like, this is the part where it gets real. Like it's, this is some scary shit. Um, but yeah, I feel good now. I feel good having gotten the, the mat out. I feel like I've broken ground and it's not quite as scary anymore. took forever but the uh, van floor is totally clean and I think now a Home Depot trip is in order.
so here's the plan. I'm currently at my dad's house because he has a table saw and many other tools that I don't happen to own or have the space for or have the knowledge to use. So um, I'm hoping today that I can use that table saw to cut down um, all that plywood and help fill in the gaps of the van floor. After that, I'm gonna put on the hush mat um, for the sound deadening and some insulation. On top of that, I'll put out a plywood subfloor that I'll just cut out uh, in the shape of the van floor. And then finally on top of that, I will put some vinyl like sheet flooring. So I'm hoping to get at least maybe up to the, the hush mat laid down today. Um, so basically there's just a lot of measuring and cutting in my future. It's been a really busy but a productive day nonetheless. Uh, I got some help from both my dad and his friend to cut down those really unwieldy pieces of plywood um, so that now they fit very nicely in all the ribs of the van. Um, all that cutting and measuring did take a very long time so these boards aren't even like glued in yet. Uh, they are just sitting there um, but hopefully I can do that tomorrow, that's the easy part. Lay down the hush mat and start putting an actual floor in there. So I'll see what happens tomorrow with that. Okay, I am back home. Um, I'm able to park in the driveway for the next couple of days, so that's really helpful. Um, and I'm hoping that in between some meetings that I have today, I'm gonna get all of these wood pieces glued down to the main floor. Um, Ideally, I could also put down the hush mat today, but realistically, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm hoping to drive back up to my dad's tomorrow uh, to keep, you know, doing some plywood cutting for the actual subfloor, so the more I can get done before I have access to the good tools, like, the better, because I don't need any of that stuff right now, so. I got like 90 minutes before I have to meet with somebody, so I, I don't know why I did this to myself, but okay. cement ran out like halfway through. Still have boards on the ground here that are now covered in some dried contact cement spray. Um, so I went back to Home Depot again and I actually they didn't have uh, spray contact cement so I went ahead and bought uh, the real legit kind in a can. Um, and honestly, it is working a lot better anyways because uh, I realized that the the spray stuff, um, I can literally kind of just like, like, oh, let me find a good piece here. Oh, yeah, here we go. It literally just like rips right up. So I'm gonna put these down with some more secure shit and uh, finish that up. Here. 
so. That's a great idea. just working and uh, finishing up and I heard a little meow which definitely means Merlin is here so here's the boy hey Merlin <laughs> I am now finally at the step of installing the hush mat which Honestly, I'm a little nervous about this. I don't know if the square footage is going to cover it. Uh, I don't know. God damn it. Um, I haven't actually laid any of this down yet, but it does not look like it's going to be enough. Um, so I think I might have to spend another $160. So despite getting an email from AutoZone telling me my shipment for the hush mat pieces are delayed, uh, I'm still here to cut out some cardboard templates for what will eventually be the plywood subfloor. Um, because realistically, even though the shipping is delayed, uh, I, it's probably going to take me so much longer to do this, uh, than I anticipate, so. I knew this IKEA cardboard would come in handy eventually. Obviously it's been a couple of days, but the rest of my hush mat finally came in the mail and now I can lay the rest of that down and I'll secure the full plywood subfloor down and hopefully I have a nice secure floor for real kind of. So that is the subfloor all finished. I'm currently sitting on the final piece of plywood right now to weigh it down um, so that the bond for the contact cement can just really solidify. And um, yeah, unfortunately I can't put down the vinyl sheet flooring over this because nowhere has it in stock right now. So I ordered some, it should be here in about two weeks. Um, and as disappointing as that is, I at least have like totally solid subfloor, so I'm ready to go. And it, it actually feels like I've made some progress here. <laughs> Nothing has made me understand the phrase, knowledge is power, more than buying this van. Every time I think, 
I don't know how to do this, or I really don't know what I'm doing, all I have to do is stop and try to learn as much as I possibly can about the problem before I keep going. Whether that's asking for help from people who do know what they're doing, looking at countless YouTube videos and reading through online car forums and van blogs, or wandering around Home Depot like an idiot until someone asks if they can help you find anything, I usually come out of the experience feeling like, yeah, I can probably do this.